Hey everyone! This video was inspired by Hannah McNeely's hot take on monogamy and her follow-up video responding to the criticism she received. I'm not making this video to attack Hannah's character. I just found her videos very thought-provoking and I wanted to share my thoughts. It was interesting because as I was watching her second video, When You Disagree With Me, a lot of the things she was saying resonated with me. Personally, I'm not quick to unsubscribe when someone says something I disagree with. I enjoy listening to a variety of perspectives, and I can look past an occasional bad take. I appreciate that Hannah didn't delete the critical comments she received because, in my opinion, they reveal the surface-level analysis she put forward in her original video and her surface-level response to the backlash. Again, this is not meant as a personal attack. Hannah, if you're watching this, I still love you. I'm not here to cancel you. But I don't think the concept of polyamory and open relationships is as black and white as she makes it out to be. I'm not one to say that nothing is black and white, because that statement contradicts itself. It's easy to argue for veganism, because exploiting animals for trivial pleasure rather than killing them for necessity is obviously wrong, and it's pretty dang black and white. Climate change is happening, and we need to dramatically reduce emissions. Black and white. But when it comes to relationships, psychology, and cultural dynamics, there are so many shades of gray, because these things are complex and difficult to measure. I found that a lot of times in the realm of social psychology, two things can be true at the same time. For example, it's true that people should empower themselves to not be so negatively affected by other people's words, and do the inner work to become more secure in themselves, as Hannah put it. But it's also true that we are responsible for our delivery to a degree, and we should strive to communicate as compassionately as possible. It's true that sometimes the way someone responds to something we say is a reflection of their own insecurities. In those cases, the offense they feel is on them. To some degree, we're all responsible for how we react to things in life. But we're also responsible for what comes out of our mouth and how we come across. Especially if you have a large platform. While I'm always polite and respectful, I don't cloak my perspective in fuzzy wording just to make sure no one gets their feelings hurt. I'm just so tired of people lying or sugarcoating just to protect the emotional response of the listener. It's not productive and will get us nowhere if we continue down this path. You can communicate compassionately without sacrificing the integrity of your message. Take Earthling Ed, for example. He doesn't lie or sugarcoat things to protect the feelings of his audience, because that would be a disservice to the animals. Since his message is unpopular, he's bound to offend people. To be an effective communicator means to strive to offend as few people as possible while being clear and direct and maintaining the integrity of your message. It also means backing up your argument well and providing evidence which Hannah didn't really do, as many people pointed out in the comment section. Respectfully, I would add. The point of this video is to discuss this idea that people are too sensitive these days, so I won't really be exploring the topic of polyamory and monogamy. I will say briefly that I am in a monogamous relationship, it works for me, and I can't imagine being in an open relationship. That being said, if someone tells me they've been in a successful polyamorous or open relationship, who am I to deny their experience? Of course there are many people who try it out and discover that it doesn't work for them, but their experience doesn't invalidate the experience of those in successful relationships. It could be true that polyamory is not a good idea for the majority, but what evidence is there that it can't work for a minority? Hannah didn't provide any. We live in a time where people take such offense to an opinion that someone's choice might not be good. We're getting to the point in the world where if you disagree with anyone about anything, you can no longer be friends with them. We just live in this hyper-sensitive world right now that it's making it impossible to talk freely. I think the issue here isn't that people are so offended these days, but that Hannah shared an opinion that is unpopular among her vegan audience. Vegans tend to be more progressive, as animal liberation is a progressive idea, and progressives are typically more accepting of alternative lifestyles like polyamory. 
Hannah acknowledged in her original video that she knew she was putting out a bold opinion and she was anticipating a bunch of downward facing thumbs and lengthy comments. She got exactly what she expected. Of course some commenters reacted angrily and felt compelled to announce they were unsubscribing, but that is the nature of the internet. When you combine human nature with a platform like the internet and a bold opinion, that is what you get. And sure, some people are too easily offended. I see it. I just don't think it's this epidemic that people make it out to be. A recent poll shows that 81% of Americans agree that people are too easily offended these days. Broken down by political affiliation, 94% of Republicans, 82% of Independents, and 70% of Democrats agree with this idea. If the vast majority of people agree with this, wouldn't that render it meaningless? Like, surely the people who think that people are too easily offended these days don't think this of themselves. And the people who they see as too easily offended likely think the same thing about them. It's like that meme, I'm not like other girls, other girls, same. <laughs> the reason a larger percentage of conservatives believe this is because they want to conserve tradition. Of course they're going to be more resistant to the changing norms of what's considered to be acceptable language or behavior. I read somewhere that the reason it seems that people are so offended these days is because these are the days that we're living in. This idea is flawed because human nature hasn't fundamentally changed over the past century. What has changed over time is the things people are offended by. 60 years ago, white people were offended by black people sitting in the front of the bus. And black people were rightfully offended that they were expected to give up their seat on a crowded bus to a white person. People were pretty damn offended back in the day. When people say that people are too easily offended these days, there's an implication that society has regressed in this regard. And to that I would say, what time period would you like to return to? The Overton window has shifted to the left over time, and in response, right-wing movements have tried to drag it back to the right. It's a game of tug-of-war. In the US, the right has been fairly successful. The perceived hypersensitivity on the left is a direct response to the rise of the far right, and vice versa. In an attempt to course correct, sometimes we overcorrect. Die, cis, scum. Compounded with this never-ending culture war, we've had a massive explosion of communication via the internet. So perhaps our sensitivities are heightened because we're more informed and rightfully offended by the injustice and intolerance that has persisted for so long. And because we are so connected, shit is coming to a head. With increased awareness comes increased social tension. To paraphrase Martin Luther King, the tension has always been there, buried beneath the surface, and it must be brought out into the open to be dealt with. He lambasted the white moderate who was more devoted to order and civility than to justice. To want to return to a time where people were less offended is to prefer negative peace, the absence of tension, to positive peace, the presence of justice. Ignorance is bliss for the ignorant, but it's hell for the oppressed. I'd much rather live in a world where people are informed and offended than uninformed and less offended. I'm not suggesting Hannah wants to return to those times. I'm just trying to illustrate why this is a bad argument. We may be more offended these days because we're more aware of things to be offended by, but we're not more easily offended. To be easily offended is to be offended by dumb, petty shit. And there are so many examples of dumb, petty shit people found offensive throughout history. And today, people on both sides of the political spectrum are offended by dumb, petty shit. So it's not the left that is hypersensitive. When people say, people are so sensitive these days, they're responding to the tension that has recently been brought to the surface by progressive movements. Challenging the cultural standard of monogamy could be considered a progressive movement, and people are pushing back against the blanket statement Hannah made that polyamorous relationships don't work. People were upset because they see that the institution of marriage has left a certain subset of people feeling trapped and unhappy, and they see people in successful poly relationships. So they saw Hannah's remarks as glib. 
I'm not a relationship expert though, so let's just say that Hannah's right. Poly relationships are a bad idea across the board. The proper response to the pushback, in my opinion, would have been to present a more persuasive counter-argument and back it up with studies. But instead, she gaslit her subscribers by insisting that they're too sensitive and can't handle differing opinions. I agree that some people are overly sensitive. I don't like conversing with people who seem to want to not understand where I'm coming from and interpret everything I say in the most uncharitable way. But the comment section on her follow-up video is filled with people pointing out her double standards. I think her remarks about how we live in a time where if anyone says anything we disagree with, we can no longer be friends with them, and it's becoming impossible to talk freely, are a bit hyperbolic. I have expressed my disdain for cancel culture before, but I think that some people make it out to be a much larger problem than it is. For example, people are running with this narrative that Jenna Marbles was forced off YouTube because of cancel culture, when in reality, she wasn't being canceled, she chose to take accountability for her past behavior. And she got loads of comments from people saying that she didn't need to step down from this platform and almost nobody wants her to. And practically speaking, it's impossible to limit your social circle to only people who agree with you on everything. I don't think that's the issue. I think that people are becoming less tolerant of intolerance, and sometimes this manifests in ways that are counterproductive, unfortunately. And to her second point, your First Amendment rights do not grant you freedom from the social consequences of your speech. I understand that people have been wrongfully fired or cancelled for things they've said. So to be clear, I'm not saying it's not an issue at all. I'm just saying it's not the epidemic that people make it out to be. We should be more forgiving of others, but at the same time, we should be more cautious of what we say publicly on the internet. I've said a lot of inflammatory shit on Facebook, and looking back, although I still stand by a lot of the things I said, I would definitely word it differently now. It's true that no matter what we say, we'll be criticized. But some people receive a lot more criticism than others, and that is not without reason. Sometimes that reason is stupid. <laughs> I think vegans overall receive way more criticism than they deserve. But sometimes the reason is totally valid. Elise Parker, for example, receives a lot of criticism because she does a lot of shitty things. I still value Hannah's content and see her as a good person, and since she expressed that she appreciates honesty and directness, I'll be honest and direct. I think her video was lazy. I get it though, it takes a lot of time and effort to put together a nuanced, well-researched video. And since art is never finished, only abandoned, no video will ever be perfect. There's no way we can consider every possible counter-argument, let alone address them all. But considering Hannah knew it would spark backlash, I think she could have spent more time clarifying her intention and backing up her arguments. And I think she could have shown more respect to her subscribers in her follow-up video. Honestly, your comments, whether positive or negative, have nothing to do with me. This was flippant and disrespectful to all the people who took the time to write out a thoughtful response. In some cases, it makes sense to brush off criticism, like the few people who took offense to her advice on how to start a yoga practice. That is more of a reflection of their own insecurities. But when thousands of your own subscribers are upset about something you said, and particularly the way you said it, it probably has something to do with you. In conclusion, when people say, people are so offended these days, it sounds a lot like older generations saying, kids these days. It's a debate tactic used by political reactionaries to take the focus off of whatever issue is being discussed. We've made social progress by exposing bad ideas and creating social consequences for upholding them. We can change public opinion, we can change policy, but we can't change human nature. Humans have and always will be offended by shit. 
but progress is signified by the things we're offended by. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment down below and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, peace out. Yo, how when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, nah, no me now. How when me eat them, I wonder when me yam. When me tell them, say that I'm a vegan man. How when me eat them, I wonder when me eat them. When me tell them, say me not eat no fish, nah, no me now.